Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this video I'm going to attempt a Gemini Light Lunar Lander mission. This is launched on a Saturn 1B with boosters from a Titan 2, but basically all hardware that was available in 1967 and I'll go through it as we go along. But the goal is to land a Kerbal on the moon and return that Kerbal or these Kerbals uh, safely back to Earth and uh, well, let's uh, get on with it. KOS will handle the launch, and we'll talk about it. Uh, sorry for the nighttime launch, but we did have to line up on the moon. So ignition of the eight H1 engines on the Saturn 1B, and then the Titan 2 boosters. Actually, I think these are Titan 3 boosters, right? Uh, so UA1205 SRM from Titan. 3C slash D slash E. Anyway, they were available at the time, that's all I know. So whether the Saturn 1B could actually have two boosters on the side like this, well first of all we had to remove four fins. It's got four fins left, it had eight fins to begin with, so I don't think it's like got a fin problem. It's probably alright. And I believe Saturn 1B would have been structurally sound enough to handle the boosters. After all, it's a bundle of different tanks uh, slapped together. It's sort of more rigid because of that. Probably could take the stress, but, you know, you would want to test that out, but I believe it should have been possible. These were not lightweight tanks by any stretch of the imagination. The second stage is a Saturn 1B upper stage, which is a J2 stage, not a J2S, so not upgraded or anything. And then the third stage is a Centaur stage, two RL10A3-3As. Then there's a fourth stage, which is a trans stage, which is uh, two AJ10s. And that was uh, alternate upper stage for the Titan rockets originally meant to be for the dinosaur program. The total mass on the launch pad for all of this was about a thousand tons, maybe closer to a thousand one hundred, but still about a third of the mass of the Apollo Saturn V moon missions. Okay, booster separation. Unfortunately, the main stage only goes for 26 more seconds after booster separation. Right. Separation. Oh. Right. Well, okay. That wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, I staged the fairings on this stage at the same time as that decoupling instead of the next one. Uh, the stage, it, it's all fine. It's fine. Uh, we'll have to make a note that uh, we have a little bit less mass than we're supposed to have at this point. But, yeah. We can continue. It's fine. Technically, it's reading, you know, if you sum up this delta V plus the amount of speed we've got, that would be past overall velocity, but it's going to take seven more minutes to burn this stage, and we are not, uh, we're not going to be able to do that without pitching up and losing some of that delta V, so the Centaur stage will complete orbit. Okay, last few seconds in this stage. Separation, and there we go. So there's the Centaur stage here, and then we've got the Trans stage here. And then this is a cargo bay. It's actually the Man Orbital Lab cargo bay. Man Orbital Lab was an Air Force project uh, to build a space station, and it used a Gemini capsule and everything and Titan rockets, but didn't happen because ultimately Skylab was given the go. And uh, in there is our lander in the cargo bay, and then the rest is just a normal Gemini spacecraft. There is no decoupler between the spacecraft and the cargo bay, but there is a decoupler in the normal places on the Gemini spacecraft, of course. Okay, 
we are finalizing orbit. So the Centaur stage will start our transfer to the moon and the trans stage will complete it. The trans stage has to capture us around the moon and then bring us back. So it's quite, quite a lot to do. But rather than capture into a low orbit around the moon, we're going to capture into a high orbit around the moon and the lander is going to do some of the work getting down to a low orbit and then landing and then getting back up to the orbit that the rest of the mission is in. Okay, well, let's start our fuel cells and oxygen generator. Now that we are in orbit and let me plot for the moon. Okay, we have a transfer costing 3,122.8 that will go retrograde around the moon. Um, not quite a free return, of course, but uh, free enough. And a good moon periapsis in four days. That's a long trip, but it's an okay trip. As far as our life support goes, uh, we've got seven days of water, but the fuel cell will generate water. Uh, Ten days of oxygen, but there's an oxygen generator which takes the um, liquid oxygen from the equipment section and turns it into oxygen so we should get more oxygen like that and otherwise 14 days of food. The lander itself has two days of food for one Kerbal. Okay RCS on and two to node. We've got two sets of RCS thrusters down here. And these use the HTP in the Centaur stage. That's what it had. It's weird, the Centaur stage has HTP, the trans stage has hydrazine, along with the aerozine and N204 that the AJ-10s use. And then the equipment section here, the RCS fuel is, I think, just the MMH and N204. Okay, it says very stable. Ignition. I guess we can uh, take a look at the cargo bay and its contents. Oh, it's upside down. So this is the Gemini Light Lander, and this is the key to the whole business. It's only because this is so small that we can manage this. These tanks, uh, so uh, I know it's gray and it's in a gray cargo bay, so it's a little bit difficult to see, but this is the lightweight lander. This is its lander legs, and then there's two side tanks here with currently locked fuel. These tanks are just default tanks, they are not balloon tanks, and the engine is a single advanced Gemini lander engine. So no gimbal on that, by the way. And it's all on a docking port, but it can't redock, it doesn't have a docking port on its own, a docking port will be too heavy for it. So this was an actual idea, uh, it, you can search for it on the web, it's either called Gemini Light lunar lander or Gemini lunar lander or Langley light lander also it goes by because I think it was thought up by NASA Langley and so yeah it's more or less like an extended EVA suit I don't even think it was pressurized to be honest and it probably didn't really contain food uh, it was a real flag planting mission where they would go down and um, you know they, they would probably have their EVA suit on the entire way and then come back up again. So yeah, but if you want to fulfill that uh, by the end of the decade promise and it turns out Apollo doesn't work, I guess this was the backup plan or a backup plan. And it is the reason why FASA has this lightweight lander and this these lander legs and the advanced Gemini lander engine. The infamous advanced Gemini lander engine. Very useful little engine, that. Most of this comes from the FASA pack. I think, actually, I don't remember if the boosters do. But certainly the Saturn 1B does, this Centaur stage does, the Trans stage does, this Cargo Bay does, and the Gemini does. So it's pretty much a FASA thing. And, again, the Lander as well. Pretty much a FASA thing. Now there's a catch on the trans stage. The trans stage only has four ignitions, so we have to be extra careful about that. If it had been sensible to accommodate the Apollo service module, that might have been a better choice, but of course that's at four meters and everything else here is at 
3.05 meters, by the way, is 10 feet. That's why it's 3.05. It's because it's 10 feet. Okay, that's it for the centaur. And let's throttle down first. Separation. Otherwise, the thrusters there are still going. And ignition. Alright, here we go. No, nope, that was a little bit short, but it's all right. We've got RCS, and I've added some RCS quads, but it's not going to be powerful enough, I think. So let's see. Prograde, please. RCS on. Yeah, these just aren't firing. I guess it doesn't feed to them or something. If I had ship manifest, I could dump that hydrazine, but I guess we're just going to have to carry it now. Okay, that will be good. So at this point we have a good transfer and we have 1,250 meters per second left with this stage, it says. It claims. So here we go. I had to tweak the Gemini fuel cells so that they actually properly supplied power to the Gemini capsule. I think it was like 2.2 uh, charge produced by the fuel cells and 2.09 consumed by the capsule. And then I think maybe TAC life support has some overhead on top of that. In any case, we were getting drained anyway. Um, possibly the light lunar lander, that really shouldn't consume very much. I think I tweaked the pods consumption rather than the fuel cell production. I know that the fuel cells produce 2.2 kilowatts. That's, that is written. But I didn't really have a number on the pods consumption. And so I reduced the pods consumption to give us the required margin. Anyway, that's Earth. I don't see... where's the moon anyway? Gotta say, uh, the water does not seem to be being produced properly. I mean, there's a fuel cell. But we're down to less than half of our water. Let me see if there's something else I need to activate. Maybe I should stop the oxygen generator. No, that doesn't consume water though. Didn't think I had this problem before. This is not going to be enough water to get back home if the fuel cell is not going to produce water. It's consumed liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Oh, a little side note. This has retro rockets on it, but I dumped all of its solid rocket propellant because we don't need those. I mean, not only do we not seem to have enough water, but we have to remember that some of that water is in this lightweight lander and it won't be transferred back after we do the mission to the surface. Okay, I'm reserving 700 meters per second here for the trip home and we are in a loose orbit. And when we break orbit, well, it'll be on this side. It's not the best situation, but it'll be okay. I still haven't gotten rid of the cap. Let me get rid of the cap. Okay, well, hopefully that'll be steady enough. Okay, Jeb has to do an EVA to the lander. There's really no internal way to get there. And Jeb will have to EVA out as well. back into the Gemini capsule. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to get in and out of the Gemini capsule, right? They have hatches. That's upside down, but... Okay, Jeb is in the pod, and we decouple. Not a lot of food. I wanted to carry a little bit more with us. Probably the Gemini spacecraft would do a collision avoidance maneuver to pull it itself away rather than have this use its thrusters inside the cargo bay, but anyway, let's get the legs down. Um, we'll get ourselves, well, we want to land over here. So we're going to pull that apoapsis all the way down until it's a surface landing. 
probably would not want to blast a Gemini spacecraft with our thrust, but it's fine. Note that we had about 5,100 meters per second in this. And that's mainly thanks to the light mass of this part more than anything else. Again, we're not using balloon tanks or anything. We're going to be coming down pretty sharply. As you can see, we're going to have a high apoapsis and basically be coming down, aiming for right about here-ish. Mm, food is running out in this. That's fine. They can survive for a little bit without food. Okay, well, Jeb should have a pretty clear view of the surface. And actually, the real design had a completely clear sort of face here. Okay, on final descent, and we're looking good. We've got... we'll probably have more than 2,800 left over, which is a lot, but remember, we have to get to our spacecraft in high orbit, as opposed to a regular orbit. So we needed more margin for that. Fortunately, this does have a fairly wide base. So my propensity for tipping over hopefully will not be a big thing here. All right, we are down. Uh, let's do, oh, let's turn off the thrusters. And uh, this has sort of a nice little ladder down. So everything should be fine. Um, come down. All right, plant a flag, please. Light, lunar, lander, landing, site. I don't have any plat text, it's fine. We got the picture. Nope, oh, don't knock into the lander, it is very light. Okay, so the question is how to get back. We probably have to wait a little bit to have optimal timing here when that starts coming around. Okay, uh, I don't know if it's off. No, I probably should have started a little bit earlier. But we have a target heading here, so we'll just match that. And off we go. RCS would be important right now. Okay, I wasted a bunch just trying to roll it like this because I just prefer to sort of have this sort of view. Oh no, it's going up again. So timing was a bit off. It says food depleted. Am I the ship or is it? Yeah, it's here. It's not depleted yet, you know. We've still got food. Okay, and it's a bit awkward, but it seems like we can get some sort of encounter out there if we do a burn right now. Well, we have the amount of fuel, but it looks like it's gonna take some tweaking. Anyway, we'll give it a go. Okay, I think I'd be better off being patient at this point. We're gonna take about 100 meters per second to match orbits with the target, like this, and we have 230. And right now our closest approach distance is 23 kilometers, which is pretty far. Okay, we've got a better close approach like that after an hour and a half. As far as supplies go, it's just a matter of food that we don't have. We've got plenty of water and oxygen, so if Jeb can hang on for an hour and a half without a snack. Ooh, electric charge is getting tight. This does not have a fuel cell, so hmm, how much electric charge do we have? It says infinite, and it's lying. It says infinities. Mm, it's uh, taking electric charges at uh, 0.45 per second. And my conclusion is no, that's about half an hour, and then we still need time to do uh, close closer than what we're doing right now. We need to use what fuel we have to get there faster. 16 minutes should be okay. Electricity has not been depleted. Stop lying. <laughs> it's just really close to being depleted. 
Okay, we have made it. I'm gonna make sure it's drifting away from the, the ship and... All right, off, RCS off as Jeb EVAs. He's got a little bit of electric charge. Don't say it's depleted. Attack life support is such an alarmist. Okay, grab and board. Okay, Jeb is in. A water situation is a pain. Two days and eight hours, and that's due to a flaw in how the fuel cells seem to be working. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. Is there a way to make sure they actually produce water around here? They certainly did that. That's that's not a question. Let me start air filter, maybe. I don't know. Okay, but now we have 971 meters per second, which should be enough to get back. Even from a low orbit, it should be enough to get back. Though this is not an optimal orbit. We're going to be a little bit higher above the moon than we normally are when we try and do the re uh, do the burn to return. We'll say 60 kilometers for now. We can fine-tune it. Let's close the cargo bay. We don't really need it open right now. So unfortunately the lander is just going to sit there much like the Apollo lunar landers did. We're carrying more fuel here than we need to. So yeah, not the optimal place to have a Earth return burn, but as long as it works, it works. I'm going to try 59 or 60, around there-ish. 58? Okay, fine, 58. No, that seems a little bit low. The Gemini heat shield... I'm not 100% sure on. We've tr we tried it on the live stream and it seemed to work. We had other problems on the live stream. We didn't have enough Delta V because, for instance, I had the PSPC here, which was a load that we didn't have to carry, and we didn't have thruster placement in proper locations, and I didn't think up this uh, high orbit scheme that we are using this time, right? Uh, during the live stream, we got into a low orbit and then we didn't have enough to get back home, really. So we cheated, but that's a different story. We're doing it legitimately now. And we actually have 209 meters per second left over here. Well, let's see what happens. The one problem is the water, but that's, that's not my fault. It was supposed to be generating water, and it's not. Yes, water depleted. We were just talking about that. We didn't really have very good communications, that's something we should add. It's going to end up being about a nine day mission. Well, we do have an ignition left, maybe I should use the fuel to slow down just a tad. I don't know. Nah, let's, let's try it out, we'll see what happens. Okay, that's good enough. Separation. It's the right thing, right? Hopefully. Separation. Well, whatever was supposed to separate has not separated. That I don't want to have separate. This I do. Let's just use decouple here. There we go. It's all off. And now we can activate these thrusters. Turn surface negative. We're currently full up on electric charge, but that doesn't last very long. Even though this doesn't read it properly. We're depleting by 1.6 per second. So we really need to get to a low, if we bounce out, at least we should try and get into a low orbit, otherwise we're going to lose electric charge. Things are getting a bit red here. I'm going to stop with the pitch and yaw control. The explosions are very menacing. The fairing on top does stay on, by the way. That's to protect the parachutes. We have ablation, but it's pretty mild. 
Okay, we all need to roll over in order to stop ourselves from going up too much. Well, with an orbital period under four hours, I think we're good on the electric charge. So if we do eventually get out of the atmosphere, we should still be alright. As long as they don't really need to have a drink of water. Oh, we might not get out of the atmosphere? I don't know, it's... No, uh, I think we'll still end up outside. Periapsis is going low again, so let me rotate again. I didn't realize it had that much effect at this level, but... Drag is reducing my periapsis more than I really wanted to. It doesn't seem to matter how I rotate the pod. But we can correct that once we're out of the atmosphere. I'm actually pretty surprised that it didn't take more of the ablator at least. I mean, it's one thing to be a lunar rated heat shield, but it's it's uh it's a bit OP on the ablator. Okay, I think I'm fine with it going in at 59 kilometers. Okay, here we go again. Well, uh this terrain looks familiar. Are we Yes, we are over Australia, indeed. I get the feeling this is not going to be a splashdown, but we'll see. Okay, G-forces seem pretty mild. And I think they're beginning to subside here. And what was the max on that? 4.1 Gs, the max endured so far. And on launch, the solid boosters tapered off so that we didn't pass 4Gs at that point. And it doesn't look like we were passing 4Gs here either. So yes, we will be safely landing in Australia. Depends on how many malevolent creatures there are down there. And, well, at least all astronauts and presumably Kerbonauts get desert training, right? Survival training. Should be alright. And we're gonna separate off the nose cone. Oop, that never gets off properly though. Okay, so, successful mission. Not the smallest lunar mission that we could have come up with. Uh, with more efficient engines we could have done better, of course. But, uh, any small lunar lander mission would probably benefit from using the Gemini light lander. That's tough to replace with anything normal. Uh, that's about as light as it gets. So, uh, certainly not my idea. This is all stuff that was worked out during the 60s. I don't know what launcher they would have used. Maybe they would have used two Titans instead, instead people were saying. But I preferred the single launch Saturn 1B with the boosters on the side, <laughs> uh, mainly because uh, rendezvousing around Earth is a pain in the rear end, so. All right, there we have it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.